Boris Johnson plays Cupid. All right, it's not a newspaper headline you're likely to see on tomorrow's front pages, even though it will be Valentine's Day. But this is what the Foreign Secretary is hoping his speech will do. As Anushka was saying a little earlier, he wants Brexiteers and Remainers to start loving each other, united by Britain's post-Brexit prosperity. Easier said than done, perhaps. After all, during the referendum campaign, his Cabinet colleague Amber Rudd said of Mr Johnson himself, he's not the man you want driving you home at the end of the evening. So are the divisions in the Conservative Party reflected among the voters? Paul Moss has been examining the evidence. I met Patrick in a central London cafe. 40-something, mild-mannered. Not, he tells me, someone who would normally be roused to anger about politics. And yet, when it comes to the subject of Brexit and Brexit supporters, Patrick has what could be described as a passionate point of view. Brexiteers are a hodgepodge. You know, there are racists, there are hypocrites, there's imbeciles, and there's the very misinformed. My father voted for Brexit, and I haven't spoken to him in a year. Look, this is going to sound to some people absurd, to not speak to your own father because of a, a difference of opinion over Brexit. Look, a donkey with a brain tumour can see that Brexit is a bad idea. Most people I know are against Brexit. About 50% of them feel like me. They're outraged and they find it difficult to talk about Brexit without getting wound up because it is such a heinous crime. It wasn't supposed to stay this bitter. David Cameron famously hoped that the EU referendum would finally settle the issue for a generation. And yet more than a year and a half since that vote, it seems the wounds from the campaign haven't even begun to heal. I've come to the London School of Economics, where academics have been carrying out an extensive survey on attitudes to Brexit, and specifically about the attitude that both Brexiteers and Remainers have towards their own side and the opposition. There's a new divide in public opinion, new tribes that are formed around Leavers and Remainers. Those carry sort of real strong emotional attachments. Sarah Hobbolt is Professor of Politics at the LSE and took me through some of the results her survey had found. Remainers and Leavers are both very likely to describe their own tribe, their own side in very positive terms, whereas they tend to uh, describe the other side in very negative terms. It means that we see people from the other tribe, not just as someone we disagree with politically, but also someone that we think is close-minded, less intelligent and more selfish and self-interested. And that translates into sort of everyday life. So, for example, we ran an experiment where we asked people, who would you like as a lodger if you had a room to rent out? And we found that the really decisive factor was the Brexit vote. So, in other words, people don't want to rent their room out to someone who they see as belonging to the other tribe. Is the division over Brexit any more hostile than, than other political divisions that have existed in Britain? It seems so at the moment, yes. What we do find is that when we compare with party support, so are you a Conservative supporter or are you a Labour supporter, we find that these new Brexit identities are even stronger. The last time I'd been in the Lord Nelson pub, it was three days after the referendum. And they were still all celebrating the result. Just about everyone I met there that day in South East London had voted for Brexit. Today, the mood was rather more subdued, until I raised again the subject of Britain's membership of the EU. Drinkers here seemed to perk up and were happy to express their opinions, sometimes in rather forthright language. I went 200 miles to go home to vote, to go out. It was that important to you? Yes. It's about time we did it and finally, finally got out. What do you think of the, the Remain supporters? Upper class. It's upper class who do not see reality. What do you make of the, the Remain supporters? They're greedy bastards. It's all money to them people. Who won the war? We did. So the people who today still insist we should stay in the European Union, who, who don't want to have Brexit? Well, they're assholes, aren't they? I'm all for Brexit myself. There are two world wars with Europe, and so, I mean, you know, who needs them? What do you think of the Remainers? What do you think of a Remain supporter? What, what, what image do you have in mind? I, I, don't, I don't think much of them at all, you know. Most of them are, 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 are of course, people in the money. You've had your choice, you had the vote, that's it. Follow it through. The vote may be over and done with, the process towards Brexit underway. And yet a look at various opinion polls shows that events since then don't seem to have changed anyone's mind. 
There is an occasional jolt to the status quo, but that 52-48% split remains roughly intact. Ben Page is chief executive of the polling firm Ipsos Mori and sees this as another sign of the continuing division which cuts through Britain today. Whatever evidence comes out, whether about the economy or about anything else, the two sort of blocks of voters, and particularly the hardcore on on each side, really don't want to admit that anything, you know, that they may have they may they've changed their minds or that anything would ever alter their decision. Brexit was an event in 2016 or the referendum, but we've gone on arguing about it like cats and dogs ever since, and it's none of it's settled, or well, it won't be settled even in March 2019. It seems that the Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson wants to to bring the two sides together, Brexiteers and Remainers, to attempt some kind of reconciliation. Uh, given what you know, how would you rate his chances? I think it's like somebody attending a bonfire party with some kerosene to try and calm things down. I, I really don't think that a speech by Boris Johnson is going to make the slightest bit of difference, quite frankly. Ben Page of Ipsos Mori talking to Paul Moss.